Hey, what's up guys? In case you're new here, my name is Charles, a final year software engineering student at the Technical University of Kenya. The final year project is an important exercise to every student at the School of Computing and Information Technology in the Technical University of Kenya. For you to graduate, you must succeed in your final year project. So, in this video, I will be sharing with you what is involved in the final year software engineering project at TUK, tips of coming up with a project idea, and technologies that I am planning to use in my final year project. What is involved in the final year software engineering project at TUK? Final year project at TUK is divided into project A and project B. Project A is usually done at the first semester of the final year, and Project B is done in the second semester of the final year. Project A involves coming up with a project idea, writing a project proposal, and presenting your project proposal to a panel of supervisors. Coming up with a project idea. Coming up with a project idea is one of the hardest parts of project A, mainly because most of the project ideas have already been implemented. Your project should be unique. It shouldn't be something that has already been done before. Either you implement new features to an existing application or you come up with something totally new from the ground. Sounds hard? It is. Also, consider the time factor when coming up with a project idea. Ask yourself, can the project be completed within the given time frame? So, my first project idea was about creating an exam system for our school. But unfortunately, it was rejected because it had already been done in the previous year. My second project idea was about creating a waste management system. This project idea was also rejected because the idea was too broad and I couldn't find a narrow scope. By that idea, that one came through. So, how do you come up with a project idea? There are two main tactics you can use to come up with a project idea. One is reading literature in a certain area of interest. This involves reading scholar papers or academic papers. Where can you get these academic papers? Check out Google Scholar. Reading academic papers help you to know the already existing systems and the problems that they try to solve. This will help you to come up with a unique idea by advancing a research through shedding in new right, identifying gaps in the existing systems, or by knowing whether an idea that you already had has already been implemented. Second is by thinking of problems that the community around you face and asking yourself, can these problems be solved using a tech solution? What is a project proposal? A project proposal is a document that you use to convince a sponsor in this case, the supervisors, that a project needs to kick off to solve a particular problem or opportunity. It describes in depth how the project is going to be commenced so that the sponsor understands what is involved early. This is where you give more details about your project idea, the background information, the problem you are trying to solve, the objectives of the study, justifying your project, schedule, and resources that you'll need. In Project A, there is also doing literature review and methodology. Methodology involves data correction and analysis. This is also where you explain the SDLC approach that you are going to use to develop the software. Is it Agile methodology or waterfall? Project B is done only after Project A is approved. This is where you do the system analysis, design, and actual implementation of the system. So, 
this is the main thing that I will be doing this semester. The technologies that I am planning to use both on the front end and the back end of my application. My project will be a web-based application and it will be having three unique users. That is the normal users, admins and super admins. Implementing this project will be a big challenge considering that I'll be having other units to work on. So this is the point in life that I need to become more productive than ever before. To save on time, I will be using Firebase backend services instead of maintaining my own backend APIs. This will form what we call a serverless architecture. But how will I be able to customize the Firebase backend services to suit my needs? Well, Firebase has what we call custom claims and cloud functions, which you can use to customize the Firebase backend services. Custom claims are also accessible on the front end, which you can use to control what the clients see. Check out this custom claims intro by at the net ninja. All right then, so what are custom claims? Well, in a nutshell, claims are just extra bits of information that can be associated with a particular user. Now, we've already seen the basic properties of a user using Firebase auth, things like the user ID, the email, or the display name, etc. But we can also store additional special properties via custom claims. An example would be an admin property, and that could be set to true, or a premium property for a paying user, that could be set to true. Now, it's not good practice just to attach any old information to users, like a biography or what blogs they might have written on the website. Custom claims were not meant for that, because remember, this user token is sent back and forth in every request to Firebase that we make. Now, if we start storing tons of data on it, then it's not going to be as efficient. So for any custom user data associated with a user, use the Firestore like we saw a couple of videos ago. But for any kind of user roles or permissions, we could use custom claims. So then the general idea is that we attach a custom claim to a user, for example, this admin one right here. Now then, when we send the user token back and forth from the client to the server and vice versa, we can access that claim both on the server and on the clients. Now, we could use that claim to either protect the database dependent on the claim value, or we could update the UI on the front end dependent on that claim value as well. So for example, on the database, we could restrict write access to only users with an admin claim of true. And on the front end, we could show users with an admin claim of true a different UI. So they could do maybe different things on the front end. And this intro on cloud functions. If you're an app developer, you know that a successful mobile app has lots of responsibilities. For example, apps built on Firebase use its authentication feature to sign in users, and they typically read and write data to its real-time database. They might also store files in the cloud using its scalable storage. These are all great features for building your app, but sometimes you can't put all your logic inside the app to run on the user's device. For example, prying eyes may try to reverse engineer and modify your app's code. Or maybe you need to change your app's behavior instantly without publishing a new version that your users have to install. And sometimes it's best to have a single place where expensive work is performed. Traditionally, to solve these problems, you would deploy your private code to a backend server that you manage. The app would then use an API or library to communicate with that server and issue requests. However, with Cloud Functions for Firebase, you don't need to set up, maintain, and scale that backend to get its benefits. Instead, you can write and deploy code to our servers that automatically responds to events in your app. Did a user just log in for the first time? You can send them a welcome email with a function. Did that user insert a value into your real-time database? You can update it right away with a function. And did that user upload photos to your storage bucket? You can analyze, resize, and manipulate them all with a function. And finally, with a function, you can also send a message with Firebase Cloud Messaging to that user's friends so they can know what's happening right away. You can even create functions to build a web-based API for your data that anyone can use. You write your functions in JavaScript for the Node environment, and all it takes is one easy command line to deploy your functions for immediate use. 
With Cloud Functions, you can seamlessly integrate many features of Firebase to provide the back-end services that your app requires to be fast, secure, and complete. And you can do it all without having to provision servers, tune them, upgrade them, and scale them up or down to meet your user's demand. On the front end, I will simply use React and still wondering whether to use Redux or Context API and Hooks. I will come up with another video on Project B and I will be sharing with you whatever I will learn when designing and implementing my final year project. If you are interested, make sure you subscribe and turn on post notification so that you don't miss it. That's it for this video friends. If you are looking for a project idea or just wondering how you could customize the Firebase backend services, I hope this video was helpful.